So our speaker this morning is Mrs. Sandra Cooper, religious science practitioner. And today is not practitioner Sunday. I'm sure this morning she has prepared for you a lesson in truth that has been carefully thought through to encourage you to use truth as the banner in your life to wave it in front of every situation that occurs. Mrs. Cooper. Thank you so much, Carol. Good morning, everyone. It is my absolute pleasure this morning to be here. I am, I'm just delighted when, you know, driving down this road and seeing the Ponciana, Ponciana trees in absolute full bloom. Isn't that God out there? Oh, absolutely beautiful. So I welcome you all to my heart and to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And I say a special welcome to those of you who are joining us from far places. Give thanks for the power of the internet. Now, which one of you can remember uh, back in the 70s, you know, when there was a lot of political fervor, hearing the statement Mash down that lie. You remember this statement? Yes, and then very recently it came up in the news again. And it reminded me that I also, I, I kind of incorporated it in my life. And I use it especially when I find myself entering into some, you know, you know my mind entertaining some negative self-talk. You see, I had learned very early in my life what was considered a lie and what was the truth? I was taught to tell the truth because that is what good little girls do. I learned that telling lies would earn me a spanking or make me miss out on a trip to Hope Gardens or Dairy Farmers for chocolate milk and ice cream. I mean, Dairy Farmers, who remembers Dairy Farmers back in the day? Mm -hmm. The value of telling the truth was so embedded in me that to this day, I'm committed to living my life in integrity. So fast forward, and truth came to take on a whole new meaning presented as one of the fundamental principles of this teaching that we call the science of mind. We talk about truth from this platform, and it is woven into the classes that we teach here at the temple. But what really is truth? What does it mean? How are we living it? And how can we live it more fulsomely? So I invite you to walk with me this morning as we seek some of the answers to these questions together in my message, which I've entitled, Nothing But The Truth. So I went on the internet and I looked for what truth meant. And I came up with a couple of answers that were um, sort of put in different categories. For example, historical truth is evidence from documents or archaeology. Then there is scientific truth, established by experiments that can be repeated and which always produce the same results. Moral truth, where people know, that sort of intuitively, what is right and wrong, without evidence to support it. And there is religious truth, where people follow a, a religion and discover the truth which comes from the God or sacred text of that religion. For example, Christianity sees truth according to the word of God and laid out in the Bible. Similarly, in Orthodox Judaism, truth is the revealed word of God. In Islam, the Quran states, truth stands out clear from error Whoever rejects evil and believes in Allah hath grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks, end of that quote. But for me, all the religious explanations of truth sound very similar, don't you think? So in paraphrasing our teaching here um, that we call the science of mind, truth is that which we describe as birthless, changeless, deathless, that which is perfect, whole, and complete. 
Truth is almighty God, spirit, law, mind indwelling anything and everything. Truth is the original creative principle from which everything originates. Truth of being refers to the idea that human beings are inseparably unified with the original creative principle. And remember John 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That is one of the first fundamental truths I learned as a little child. Our spiritual DNA, the essence of who we are, is perfect. It requires no modification or improvement. It is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good. It is ever-present. It is the real you. Remember that we are made in the image and likeness of God. So when we live in truth, we are in accord with all that God is. Love, beauty, joy, wisdom, creativity, life, and so much more. We are divine revelations of divine intelligence. There is an inner peace and harmony as our emotions are attuned to the highest and best in, authentic, in an authentic way. On the contrary, when we live a lie, or on the other hand, when there's a sense of, you know, you know, we feel a sense of inner turmoil. There is discomfort, discord, dis-ease, and tension as we battle with self-doubt, fear, lack, limitation. We are definitely out of alignment with the truth, and we feel it. We just feel wrong. So how can you know if you're living the truth or not? Look at the results in your life. What is your experience? How is your health? What about your finances? Reflect on the quality of your relationships. What's going on there? Are you doing what you love and loving what you do? The answers to these questions will indicate whether or not you are living in full alignment with truth and tell us what is going on on the inside in our consciousness. When you live truth, you live from the inside out. You are directed by the presence of spirit seeking expression. Opportunities and inspired ideas open. Solutions to problems present themselves. You see the lessons in so-called mistakes. The right people are drawn to you and you take better care of yourself because this wonderful body is the temple of the living God. And it's the only one we have. And contrary to popular belief, we can't beat out on Duca. So this is a body that we, we have and we need to take care of it. On the contrary, when you live a lie, you make yourself the victim of circumstances and conditions. You will struggle to maintain your income, your health, your relationships, your business, and everything else for that matter. I learned the meaning of truth from this teaching we call the science of mind. It brings God up close and personal and explains our inseparable oneness with it. That's one of the first things. Secondly, it teaches that as expressions of God, there is a great power for good available to us that we can use to thrive and prosper and as we navigate through this thing called life. Thirdly, it provides tools and skills that allow us to create the life of our dreams and which we rightfully deserve. Like Jesus, the master teacher said in John 8, 32, and you will know the truth, finish it with me, and the truth shall set you free. This freedom drives our divine purpose. So whatever you are put on this planet to be, to do or to have, provides strong intrinsic motivation, direction, and reason to get up in the morning. When you have purpose, you know when you are being distracted, especially by limiting beliefs or paradigms that lie in wait in our subconscious mind. Some of these beliefs include, I'm not good enough, I can't afford it, 
oh, my business will never survive COVID, or I'm too old, or I don't have the energy for that. Well, you can decide what the that means. These beliefs keep us shackled in limitation and prevent us from fully experiencing our purpose. It takes discipline to break free from limited thinking, right? And that's the limiting thinking of the lie. So pull yourself back on track and declare, mash down that lie. Being authentic means coming from a real place within. It is when our actions and words are congruent with our beliefs and values. It is being ourselves, not an imitation of what we think we should be or have been told we should be. If we truly believe in living the truth, then we must continue to learn about ourselves. It has been 183 years since emancipation, yet many of us are still under the shackles of mental slavery, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's time to challenge some of those old beliefs? Sort through the baggage of the past and shed the false masks of pretense? Yes, indeed, there is no time like now to face some of those life-sapping fears and doubts and declare, say it with me, mash down that lie. I'm not hearing you. Mash down that lie. Those fears are not real. You know what they say about fear? It's false evidence appearing real. Okay, so we have to really go into the truth as we know what is, what is true, that which is perfect, that which is whole, that which is complete. So when we have a clean slate, we can figure out our unique gift to the world. What is it that makes your heart sing? What is it that makes your spirit soar? What is it that makes you feel most alive? Once you find out, and then you can have, and then you have the courage to live from that space, the sky is the absolute limit. Remember that God in you, as you, is you. Know this truth, and you are free to experience your true self. Create the vision of what you want for yourself. Generate it through the power of your word and watch it materialize as your experience. Say with me, if I can see it in my mind, I can hold it in my hand, together. If I can see it in my mind, I can hold it in my hand. So create the vision of what you want. Declare it in all its fulsomeness and leave the rest to God. A fundamental aspect of our being able to live truth is self-awareness. Because in being self-aware, we have a better understanding of ourselves as unique creations of God. We're then free to make changes and to build on our areas of strength as well as identify where we would like to make improvements. When we are self-aware, we know when we are stuck, don't it? We feel it, we know it, it just doesn't, something just doesn't feel right. We know when we are living a lie and we can look at it squarely in the face and declare, mash down that lie. <laughs> I only hear one voice over here, but it's all right. By the way, in being authentic and self-aware, now this is a little sensitive, there will be times when the world isn't going very well. And one of the things that, that happened to me very early in this teaching is, having learned of this perfection and wholeness of God and everything is fine and all is well, when I had an issue, I was terrified. And I became most inauthentic in saying, ah, everything is fine, I'm fine. But inside, I was just torn apart. And so there, it is so important that going into denial is living the lie. When we pretend that we are not hurting, when we pretend that we are not in pain, that we are not anxious about a diagnosis, that we're not worrying, worried about a dwindling bank account. And we're not grieving the passing of a loved one. The true demonstration of living truth is when the tempest of life is swirling around and we are authentic enough to acknowledge the pain 
allow it to express, invite the help of a practitioner, go to prayer, and listen for the guidance of spirit, all the time telling ourselves that God's got this. Let, let me hear you say that together. God's got this. Isn't that reassuring? God's got this. You know, I was talking to Reverend Anne about all this because I had to get some, um, I was doing some of the research and I wanted her to help. And she wondered, you know, why if the truth about humankind is that we're made so gloriously and we have all of this teaching and it is so wonderful and it can do so much for our lives, then why do some of us still live and experience um, conditions and circumstances that are in stark opposition to the truth? And the simple answer came to me, and the answer is choice. We have the power of choice. We have free will to choose. And sometimes that choice, the choices we make are unconscious, fueled by old habits and past conditioning. For some of us, it ain't so easy to let go of the past. But we have to do what? Mash down that lie. When the, the stories of the past come up, you think that I'm not good enough thing easy? No matter how hard, how much I've worked, how much I've accomplished, some new opportunity comes to me and almost the default thought, boy, Sandra, you can't do this, you know. I'm not good enough. Thankfully, the time I spend in that space of I'm not good enough, that time is getting less and less because I have come to know and understand the power that I have within me. So if, I've, if my ego tells me that I'm not good enough, I will say, get thee behind me, and I will call on the presence. I'll call on that, that presence within me that is absolute, and know that I have whatever I need to make what I need to have happen, happen. You know, so, we have to be unrelenting in our spiritual practice because that is how we fortify. When soldiers are, are, are being trained, it's almost like the, the military breaks them down, breaks down some of the old habits and conditioning and builds them up in the way that they want to, to, to be as good soldiers. So this is why we come to class. This is why we come to, to service on a Sunday morning. This is why we tune in. Right? Uh, and this is to understand, to get the tools, to get the skills, to get the fortification that we need to walk this path. And so I want you to say with me, and I'm, I'll read it once. Images of limitation are neither person, place, nor thing. They have no power over me. Let's see, let, let's, can you think we can manage that together? Images of limitation are neither person, place, nor thing. They have no power over me. Let, let's hear that now. Images of limitation are neither person, place, or thing. They have no power over me. When we change the consciousness, the false conditions are bound to disappear. Remember that the mind is a center of divine operation, always ready for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something that is beyond what has gone before, something entirely new. In the meantime, let go of things or people who are holding you back. Sometimes we have to weed out, you know. And that may be a hard thing to do. Because as we grow, sometimes we find that the people who we have been with for a long time, and sometimes those persons are very close to us, they don't share our dream. They're not supportive of us, and we have to love them and bless them and let them go. And we also have to let go of the baggage. And this will allow you to have the space to create what you want. Also, don't let people's opinions distract you from your path. This includes even the penny section of, the, of your own mind, because we have the voices in our head that talk to us and tell us we can't. Ephesians 4.29 says, let no corrupting thought come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that, may, that it may give grace to those who hear. End of that scripture. 
Well, it's going to take some courage to do what you really want. So, so for some of us, the fear of shining brightly is often much bigger than the fear of failing. Did you know that? For some of us, the fear of shining brightly is much bigger than the fear of failing. Step over the threshold of your anxiety. I got that one from uh, our beloved um, Howard Daly. Step over the threshold of your anxiety. Believe in yourself and go for your dreams. Living truth is a conscious choice. We choose so that, as Ephesians again 4.14 says, we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. End of that quote. Remember that is we run things, things don't run we. And speaking of running things, I must share one of the most inspiring stories I've heard for a long time, and, and I know everybody knows it, but I don't care, I'm going to tell it anyway. It is, it is for me a demonstration of what it means to live the truth. And it's a, a, a story that had me buckets, ball in buckets. Told in his own words, what am I going to talk about? Anybody can guess? Answer parchment. Jamaican gold medal Olympian. Answer parchment got on the wrong bus on the day of his 110 meter semi-final. And he ended up at the aquatic village. Now, if you know these stadium layouts, it's like a whole town. Right? So it's or different towns, and each, each one of them has a different facility to nurture the games. A female volunteer gave him some money to take a taxi, which enabled him to get to the track with enough time to warm up and compete. Parchment went on to win gold in his event, it's 110 meter men's hurdles. He later returned to the aquatic center, found a volunteer, and thanked her for helping him to get to the stadium that day. He showed her his gold medal. Can you imagine? He showed her the gold medal and gave her a Jamaica Puma. I start to feel all teary again. But it's an amazing story. He didn't have to do that. Because sometimes, you know, when we win and succeed, we're so full of pride and ego. We really don't care about the persons who have helped us. But when you walk the path of truth, you do what is the right thing. Right? She, she gave her back the money also for the taxi fare, and that is integrity in expression. That video went viral. Who, who in here did not see it? Everybody saw it, don't. You never saw it, you never heard about it. Well, at least there is one person. <laughs> okay, you never heard about that, Reverend Mike? Okay, awesome. Okay, so that is an absolute demonstration of kindness and humility. All expressions of truth. Friends, your truth is your own. It is personal and exactly what you want it to be. Ensure that your focus is indeed nothing but the truth. So, help me God. Help me to remain steadfast, single-eyed, and disciplined, focused and present, and open to the wisdom and guidance that must be revealed to me as I walk the talk and live according to my highest truth. I'd like to close with a meditation by Science of Mind founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. So just, I invite you to close your eyes and allow it to just embrace you. The voice of truth speaks to me and through me. The voice of truth guides me and keeps me on the path of the perfect day. Wherever I go and whatever I do, I listen to the inner voice 
and it tells me what to do in my hour of need. I shall be told everything I need to know, everything I ought to know, when the time and the need arises. And I shall never be misled. The voice of truth cannot lie, but always speaks to me from on high. Nothing enters but this voice, for it is the voice of God. Namaste.